Hi, welcome to this video walkthrough for the Arcade Series Returns. The first thing we're going to look at is installing the devices. So once you've downloaded the pack, just double click. Uh, you will get this box appear. Just click yes to install. You should see the help viewer appear on the right hand side and the packs should um, have installed in your packs folder. Um, on the help viewer, you will find links to the online manuals for each of the devices in the arcade series returns. I would recommend taking a look through those uh, in more detail as well. So over on the left hand side, we have the devices. So there's quite a few devices in here. There's, only, there's four devices um, in the pack. There's Arkanoid, Frogger, Ghosts, and Space Invaders. Uh, but what you'll find is there is a customized device for each controller. So the supported controllers are um, all launch pads. So launch pad Mark 1 and the Mini, launch pad Mark 2 and the launch pad Pro. Uh, it's also available for push 1 and push 2 and also machine jam. You'll need to pick the correct um, device for the controller you're using. If you have already created a set with one device and you want to choose a different controller, you can just drop, drag and drop that device on top of the current one and it will just replace it and keep all the settings. Um, but it's usually preferable just to select the appropriate device to begin with. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick Frogger. I'm going to use um, Push 2 to demonstrate this for this walkthrough. So all of the arcade devices are their MIDI devices, uh, which means they will sit before a MIDI uh, instrument like a, a drum machine or a synthesizer or more MIDI effects if you have any running. Uh, they're all based on classic arcade games, their sequences. Um, so Frogger is a gate sequencer uh, for coming up with sort of melodic content. So you want to really use a synthesizer for this. So I'm just going to pick um, a synth. Okay. Right, so let's turn Frogger on. And as with all of the arcade devices, uh, what we need to do is select the control surface we're working with in the menu. Now you will need to click this small button first. Uh, and what this does is it populates the menu with any um, connected controllers. Um, so if you don't see your controller in there to begin with, click the button, but you will actually need to click this anyway. Um, you might see your controller in here, but it might be in a different order. So uh, it's always best to click the button and refresh the menu. Uh, choose push two. When we're using push two, it will take over um, the, the control of push's button matrix and some of the other buttons. This takeover um, is only whilst you have the device selected. So if you select another device, or another track, um, it will just resume normal behavior. Okay. Okay, so already we can see uh, we have this green line at the bottom and this represents uh, the sequencer here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna pick a preset. There are some presets in here already just to get you started. Um, and you can create your own, but these are just there uh, as a quick option. So the first preset, let's just hit play. Okay, so Frogger is based on the classic arcade game Frogger. In the game, you were controlling a small uh, green frog jumping across the road. Uh, and what we have here is an eight gate sequencer where what we're essentially doing is we're controlling uh, the playhead, if you like, jumping from one step to another. And the key thing is it can remain on one step longer than it can on another. So you can have these, uh, even though it's only eight steps, you can have quite a large kind of uh, length of the sequence. So how this works is we can see here on this first screen, we can see we're controlling the pitch, which is green. And we can see that it's playing the first one three times, or pulsing three times before it moves to the next one and this repeats over okay so we can change the pitch on here okay 
Now we have four pages to choose from. So the first page is controlling the pitch, that's green. The second page is controlling the gate length. So the gate length is what gives the sequencer its sort of unique um, feature in that we can make the each step last longer than another. At the moment we're going from three to one, three to one, and so on. So if I make this longer, count six, before it moves on to the next step. third page, this controls two things. On the top half, uh, the pink sliders control the octave, so we can transpose the octaves of each step. And the bottom half lets us control the accents and skip. So the accents, we've got a few lit up already. chooses if the step uh, has accent so the velocity is, uh, is louder or more pronounced. We can control the accent settings over here. So what we have is an accent amount, which is just the depth. So what we should hear now is the accent steps a little bit louder than the non-accent steps. We can choose the accent range here. So we can say this slider controls the, the lowest Part represents the non-accent steps. The high end of the range um, determines the velocity of the accent steps. So if we do something like this, we have, we've got a very, uh, very large range between non-accent and accent velocities. We can also invert this. Bottom row controls the uh, the skip, so we can skip a step completely. Which can be quite fun in performance, creating different variations. And the final page uh, controls. Well, we still have the bottom row for accents and skip. The top section controls the mode, so the modes are what you can see here. So each step can have its own mode, which is the behavior of how it responds when it's being triggered. Uh, step one at the moment is, uh, has a gate length of three and it's being repeated. If I switch it to hold, it still counts uh, three pulses until it moves across, but instead it holds the note for those three pulses. I choose single where we just get one uh, trigger, one pulse, and then the second two are, are, are silent, essentially, before it moves on. Or we can rest it completely. Over on the right hand side, we have more global options. These can be toggled with the little green button uh, to save space on the device. Uh, we can choose a scale. We're in major at the moment. Uh, we could choose something else. And we can choose the root of the device. If you are using push, uh, you want to go into the extended controls, uh, so just click where you can see the device name and you'll get some extra banks here. So each of these let you control each step, so bank 1 is controlling step 1, bank 2 is step 2, and so on. And if we go to the end to bank 9, we do have the global controls as well. 
so you can control the scale from there. We can also control the direction or behavior of the sequencer. We're going in up at the moment, we can switch it to down, so it's reversing it. We can choose the rate. We can choose the number of jumps, so the jumps refer to each of the separate sliders we can see here and on the controller. We're on 8 at the moment which is the maximum, but if we pull this down to 4, then essentially we're just looping around this section here. Six. Uh, we also have reset turned on, so what reset does is when we press stop, and we restart live, the sequencer uh, will also start from the beginning. Unless you are in down mode, in which case it will start back from the, from the end and count backwards. And finally, there are some global controls here. These simply control all of these parameters at the same time. So if you want to switch all of your modes to hold, then you can just choose that and it affects everything. So it's a quicker way of doing batch processing, if you like, on your separate parameters. And the same with the gate length and the octaves as well. Each arcade device also has a swing section over here. So with Frogger, we can turn swing on simply and choose the amount. And that simply responds to the, the rate that we're currently running Frogger at. And we also have a looper. So the looper um, has two functions. One, it allows us to capture an element of what's happening on the sequencer live and just begin playback of that. Similar to how you might just capture a, a MIDI clip running. Uh, but it does it within the device. The benefit of which is the MIDI data is stored in the device and if you want to create clips from what is happening in the device you can do that all from here with the push of a button. So first of all choose your length, you can either have one, two, four or eight um, bars and they are linked to the time signature at the top as well. So I've got it in, uh, in two bars at the moment and we can see it's going round so I'm just going to click this and now it's recording two bar section. All right, so now it's actually playing back the recorded MIDI, which obviously sounds identical. Um, the loop is quite useful more for the sequences that have more random functions. Uh, nonetheless, it could be quite useful for Frogger. Uh, what we can do now is we can either use the little arrow buttons or just pick a clip on the same track and click the clip button and it creates a clip with the MIDI notes that are currently being played. And then if you want to stop the clip, or if you want to recapture uh, a new loop, just click on this again. And if you want to stop it, just click the little red button. Uh, so this was just a quick way of creating uh, clips on the device, um, rather than having to set up a separate MIDI track and do all the routing and everything and then, and then triggering it, you can just do it from the device. So as it's generating different uh, MIDI sequences, you can just be capturing them all as separate MIDI clips as you go. Be sure to check out the other walkthroughs for the other three devices and also the user manuals on the Isotonic website.